Let's We are ready. We are ready. Oh. All right, all right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. We are live here at One Way Ministries. Bible study. We're not going to be here too long tonight uh, because we realize that this is an unscheduled Bible study, but we had to show up here at the last minute. We had to. And we thank you all for showing up tonight at One Way Ministries. We know that you could have been anywhere around the world right now, but you chose to be here at One Way Ministries live at One Way Ministries Bible Study, and we are so happy to have you here. And we're so excited to see what the Lord is going to do tonight. And we're quickly going to go to our devotional reading. Our devotional reading is going to be coming from 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 12. And on that devotional reading, it says, Be of good courage and let us play the men for our people. And for the cities of our God, and the Lord do that which seeth, seemeth him good. I feel so good tonight in his presence. I feel like that God is wanting to do something for a lot of people tonight. And if we will just stand and be in his word and be in the church house, then we can Give him honor, give him glory, and most of all, we can give him praise because I'm glad to be in the church house just one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. Lord, I'm glad to be in the church house one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. Lord, I'm glad to be in the church house one more time. I'm so glad to be in church today, worshiping my Lord and Savior, Jesus. I'm glad to be in the church house, get to read my Bible and study and pray. I'm glad to be in the church house. Just one more time, Lord, one more time. I'm happy to see everybody virtually and in person. One more time, Lord, one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. Lord, I'm Glad to be in the church house one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. Lord, I'm glad to be in the church house just one more time. I'm so happy to see everybody. We don't know where to go or who to turn to. But this day and this age, 
in this generation. We've lost our focus to worship God. We lost our focus to worship Jesus. We've lost our focus to be with the Holy Ghost. But I thank God for his goodness and mercy shall endure forever. One more time, Lord, one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. Lord, I'm glad to be in the church house one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. Lord, I'm glad to be in the church house one more time. I'm so happy for Jesus Christ, dying and sacrificing his life for everybody. I thank God for Jesus Christ, for giving us a second chance in life. I thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for allowing me to repent and be reborn again without Jesus. Dying for our lives, we would be lost, but we get a second chance in life. One more time. One more time, Lord. One more time. Lord, I'm glad to be in the church house just one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. Lord, I'm glad to be in the church house one more time. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here and allowing us to get a second chance in life. Lord God, without you, without you, without your son dying for our sins, without him sacrificing his life, that we can get a second chance in life. We would not be able to go into the floodgates of heaven. But Lord, I thank you for you, for your son Jesus, and your precious Holy Ghost. All three of them in a mix together. Lord God, I pray right now that this Bible study lesson be a help to somebody tonight, God. Lord God, I pray right now that whoever's watching this Bible study just be impacted by the Spirit of God. Lord God, we fear you. Lord God, in this day and age, we have lost a generation. But Lord God, we are praying right now that we bring the generation back to the house of God, where we bring the generation back to the church house, and that we bring the generation back to your will. Because, God, your will is going to be done regardless. The evil world that we're living in, God, we know it's just a matter of time before you bring your son Jesus Christ back. And, Lord God, while the first church, us, is going to be taken up into the rapture, there's going to be seven years of trials and tribulations. Lord God, don't let me be here in the seven years of trials and tribulations. Let me go up in the rapture with you, God. Let me be one of the ones to be called up in the rapture. Lord God, Save those that are still in the seven years and trials and tribulations when it does happen. And Lord God, we know that when you bring us back here, God, we know, God, that you are going to be awesome and you're going to reign on earth for over a thousand years. And there is a thing that the devil can do about it. I pray, God, right now that you just touch everybody in the hospital, touch everybody in the jail cell, 
bless everybody all around the world. Bless those that are trying to be legal in the United States. Bless those that are trying to be legal in other countries. And just begin to touch all churches in the name of Jesus. Lord God, this holy convocation that you're going to have next month at KCC, Kingdom City Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, and Full Gospel Holy Temple at Apostle Mary's Church in Dallas, Texas. Lord God, let these two holy conventions be impactful. Let the holy conventions be worldwide and noticed all around the world. And when we share this holy convention, God, let it be in your son Jesus' name. Bless the ministers that are going to be speaking that month. Bless the singers that are going to be singing that month. And Lord God, bless our pastor, our prophetess, Princess Holland, that she is doing mission work tonight, God, in your son Jesus' name. And touch all those that need to be reborn again. Bless those and touch those that need to be healed, delivered, and set free. Lord God, we pray that you will just begin to save Hunter Holland in the name of Jesus and that you'll bring him back to the house of God, that you'll bring Hannah Edwards back to the house of God. You'll bring Savannah Dexter to the house of God. You'll bring Celeste Solar to the house of God. You'll bring Tim Dixon to the house of God. You'll bring all the NBA, NFL, MLB, and all sport athletes. You'll bring them to the house of God and you'll save them. Before it's too late, God. Bless us, God, that need the fire back in your will, God. Bless those of us that have lost the desire to worship you and just touch us, God, to have a fire back. And bless those that have been impacted with COVID all around the world. Bless those that have been impacted with diseases all around the world, God. Touch everybody all around the world, God, wherever they're at. Whether they need sickness, whether they need healing, whether they need to be touched from sickness, whether they need to be delivered from drugs, alcohol, pornography, whatever the case may be. God, bless and touch everybody all around the world. Because this year and next year is all about rewards and blessings. And most of all, it is all about you, Jesus. Touch those that want to be saved, that want to be healed, delivered, and set free. But not only that want to be saved, touch those that want to stay saved. Because it's all about staying saved, living right, and doing your will. In the name of Jesus, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. And we'll be coming from the 10th verse through the 22nd verse. So if you got your Bibles tonight, let us turn to the book of Romans chapter 8. Verses 10 through 22. We're going to make a couple announcements while you're getting that book of the Bible turned. For the thousands and millions watching all around the world, we are in a live broadcast with over billions of people watching around the world. And we are so happy for all the billions and millions of people that are watching all around the world in the name of Jesus. And this coming month in July, our pastor, our prophetess, Princess Holland, will be ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ at Bethel Living Waters Church in Pennington Gap, Virginia. We don't know the exact dates yet, but we do know that in July, she is going to be ministering at Bethel Living Waters Church in Pennington Gap, Virginia. And sometime around this month or next, or this coming month or in August, I'm going to plan on trying to preach once again on the radio station in Pennington Gap, Virginia. So we're going to be back over to, uh, at the broadcast, in the radio broadcast in Pennington Gap, Virginia in July and August. And also in August, 
our pastor, our prophetess, Princess Holland, is going to be ministering at Brother Gary Ferguson's church in West Liberty, Kentucky, and Eagle, Eagle Eye Ministries. I believe I said that right. Eagle Eye Ministries in August. Prophetess Princess Holland will be ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. And also in August, Macedonia Baptist Church's church anniversary, I believe, is going to take place. I'm not for sure or not. As soon as we get confirmation on that, we will definitely let you know. And also, uh, just to be on the lookout, Kingdom City Church, KCC, in Charlotte, North Carolina, they're going to have their holy confrontation. That's going to be their holy confrontation in July, from July 11th through, the, through July the 18th. And I'm talking about special preachers like Bishop Darius Nixon, Bishop Lambert Gates, uh, not Clarence McClennan, but uh, Creflo Dollar, and some others, along with guest singers Fred Hammond, Kim Burrell. I'm telling you, you do not want to miss the Holy Convocation on July 11th through the 18th. You will truly be blessed by the power of God in KCC Charlotte. And also, July 18th through July 23rd, the Holy Convocation at Apostle Herman L. Murray's church in Dallas, Texas is a big thing. That Holy Convocation in Dallas, Texas is going to be very impactful and very huge. And we encourage everybody to tune in to Full Gospel Holy Temple on July 11th through July, I mean, on July 18th through July 23rd. Those two Holy Convocations, I'm telling you, by the power of God, are mighty and powerful. You do not want to miss any of those confrontations. But tonight's subject will be on, I wrote it down, why does sin kill us? That's going to be tonight's uh, message. Why does sin kill us? Up to a few minutes ago, I had no idea on what I would be teaching. I read my Bible, read my Bible, but sometimes when you read your Bible, you don't have a message on that particular day. But you have to be prepared in season and out of season. That's why the importance of not only reading the word, but you got to study the word. So that you can prove yourself that you're in the will of God. And I tell you, up until a few minutes ago, I had no idea what I was going to be saying. But by the power of God, it will be on why does sin kill us? Now, that's an ultimate question. Why does sin kill us? I'm going to take you back to when it all first started. Before sin came into the camp, everything was perfect. Everything that God made in the world was perfect. God made the world in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. And in the beginning, God created the world. He created the word of God. He created everything in the beginning of the world. He created lights. He created dark. He created animals. He created people. He created anything that you could come up with, God created. And the only couple in history that was ever created and that will ever be created by God is Adam and Eve. I'm telling you, they are like the first legit couple ever in history, Adam and Eve are. Not Adam and Steve, but Adam and Eve. You see, uh, when it comes to Adam and Eve, one of the most powerful 
couples ever in history. They had everything you could think of. Anything that they wanted, God gave it to them. As long as Adam and Eve both stayed in God's will and stayed right with the Lord. That's the key. I'm going somewhere with this. As long as they stayed right, as long as they stayed in the word of God, would nothing get to them. As long as they had their mind focused on the word of God, nothing gets to them. But how many knows that distractions come and go? How many knows that trials, tribulations come and go? Storms come and go. And sometimes if somebody doesn't like you, they're going to do their best to distract you and get you away from what God has for you. Or sometimes it's not the fact that they don't like you, but it's who you're serving. And because the devil saw that Adam served and Eve served Jesus, served God, the devil was going to do his best to distract Adam and Eve. Now, in the Garden of Eden, like the most popular thing in the Bible ever created, the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve had everything possible. God just simply told them, Adam, Eve, you all can have whatever you want. But you cannot eat off of this one particular tree. Now, before that, let me go to Romans 8 and 14, what it says. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. What does that mean? I'll tell you. We know that in God's world, that when you serve Jesus, when you go out, out for Jesus, that the law is spiritual. It didn't say that the law was physical or that the law is emotional or that the law is mental. It said that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal sold under sin. It's because where we was born into sin that we have to repent that we have to ask for forgiveness and we have to ask for Jesus to come into our life. Now, the only person that doesn't know <coughs> right from wrong would be little bitty babies because they don't know better. They don't know what is right from wrong. I'm talking about little bitty babies babies that are just being born and that are like under three and under. Now, once you teach that baby, once you teach the child growing up of what is right and wrong, then that's when they are responsible for their own soul and salvation. You see, once you know the difference between right and wrong, then you know not to do it. But because God made the law spiritual, we want to turn the law into physical, emotional, and mental. You see, we want the gifts of God. We want the talents of God. We want to do everything like God does, but we don't want to fall in the spiritual part of the law. We don't want to follow God's rules. And that's where we get into a lot of trouble. That's what I was talking about with Adam and Eve. You see, they had anything they wanted to eat and drink. They could not eat from the tree of knowledge. That's the only tree that God told them not to eat off of. 
And with the tree of knowledge, oh, that devil, he knows how to twist words around. He knows how to make everything sound good. I can imagine the devil going up to Adam and Eve and saying, you know, God's, God's, you know how God is. You know, God is just, God is cool. I, the, hey, God is awesome. But he really don't mean that you don't have to eat from the tree of knowledge. You know what that actually means? That actually means that he don't want you to be smarter than him. You see, if you eat from the tree of knowledge, then you'll be smarter than God. Then you'll know what God thinks. You'll know what God says. You know what God's going to do. And God don't want you to be like him, you know. So go ahead. Eat from the tree of knowledge. Get yourself some good knowledge. Be smart. You see, the devil knows how to twist and turn words. And this is how you've got to know the difference between the spirit from not the spirit. You've got to know the difference between good and bad. You've got to know the difference between the anointing versus somebody who has it. You've got to know the difference between someone who just doesn't really care versus someone who has passion, who has heart. And the devil was convincing Adam and Eve. Come on, come on, go ahead. The devil was convincing Eve. You know, go ahead, eat that. You see, the reason why that the devil convinced Eve to do it first is because in man's eyes, in man's ears, in man's heart, we are typically supposed to be better than women. We are supposed to be stronger than women. That's what a man's eyes sees. So the devil convinced Eve to eat that fruit. So Eve ate the fruit, but get this, God did not, well, Eve got in trouble too, but when Eve ate the fruit, everything was still good, everything was still fine. There was no sin still in the camp, but, and here's a big but, Adam comes along. I can see Adam saying to Eve, Eve, what you doing? You see, what Adam really should have done is Adam should have said to Eve, hey, whoa, stop. Stop, Eve. Stop, Eve. Eve, I love you. We can't eat from the tree of knowledge. You know what God said? That ain't nothing but the devil trying to distract us. And, you know, the devil has all kinds of ways to distract you when you're doing God's word and God's will. You see, the devil will do his best to discourage you when you're doing your absolute best for Jesus Christ. When you do your absolute best for Jesus Christ, or the devil don't like it when you serve Jesus. The devil don't like it when you go all out for Jesus. Why? Because the devil knows that if you go all out for Jesus, that you have your focus on nothing but Jesus and doing his word and doing his will, the devil knows that he can't get to you as much. So the devil's going to do his best to throw all kinds of curveballs and distractions. So, like I said, Adam really should have told Eve, no, we can't do this. But you know us men... If we see a woman do something or, you know, we got to feel sorry for our women, we got to be there for our women and fight for our women and protect our women. So, you know, we're going to be, we're going to just go along with it. So Eve, I believe Eve said to Adam, hey, I ate this fruit. Hey, it's real good. You ought to try it. I believe 
that if Adam would have said, no, I can't do it, I will not do it. And you've got to put that fruit down because that fruit is going to hurt us. But in mom's preference, Adam with his dumb self, he got the fruit. And I could just imagine God shaking his head like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. And I could see Adam getting ready to put a big bite in his mouth. And as soon as he tasted that fruit, the perfect world that we lived, that we had, the perfect things that we had are no more. Because once Adam ate that fruit, it was all, that was all it. And you know, the only two people that have a real, that had a real strong connection with God, besides the Holy Ghost, of course, the only two people that have a strong connection with God is Jesus, because Jesus is God's son, and Adam. Adam, Adam had a strong connection with God. Yes, he did. Why? Because Adam was the first man ever created on earth. And because of that, God would always have a strong connection with Adam. But when Adam ate that fruit, here goes Adam and Eve. Oh, Lord, we got to run. We got to run. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Oh, no, 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 I'm not getting caught, I'm not getting caught, I'm not getting caught. And you could just see them just covering up and everything. And God's like, where you at, Adam? Where you at, Eve? Where you, where'd you go? And like, uh, we, we was hiding. Hiding? What y'all hiding for? Uh, because we was naked. Naked? Who told y'all y'all was naked? You see, that's the key point. Let me read another verse real quickly. Romans 8.10, it says, And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Now, that relates to the story that I'm talking about with Adam and Eve. The commandment was ordained to life. I found to be unto death. You see, as long as Adam and Eve focused on Jesus, as long as Adam and Eve didn't do anything out of the ordinary, they was ordained to life to be with Jesus and to serve God. But the minute that Adam picked up the fruit, I found to be unto death. I'm not talking about dying physically. Adam stayed alive. He was one of the uh, longest, the longest men to ever stay alive in history. I'm not talking about he physically died that day when he ate the fruit. He died spiritually. And when you die spiritually, you've got to be very careful because when you sin, you die spiritually every time you sin. Every time you think about taking a drink in the bar, every time you think of having sex, fornicating before marriage, every time you think of, my God, my God, have mercy. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Every time you think of gossiping, Every time you think of blaspheming the Holy Ghost, every time you think of not obeying your parents, every time you think of cussing somebody out, lying, stealing, cheating, don't you know that you die daily in the spirit? And it's very hard if you backslide on God. 75% of the time when you backslide on God, 75% of the Christians that backslide on God do not end up coming back 
to the house of God. But that 25% that backslide and come back to the house of God and come back stronger than ever, I definitely thank God for them because they keep on fighting and they keep on praying until they get it right. Because the Bible says you've got to ask for forgiveness daily. You've got to die daily. And when you repent, you must turn away from the sin and do it no more. It's one thing to ask for forgiveness and feel sorry for yourself. But it's another thing to repent and turn away from it and do it no more. Now, because Adam died spiritually that day, and Eve died spiritually that day, God was willing to give them another chance. I can give you another chance, but you will have to do this and do that. You see, before Jesus died on the cross for our sins, he had to sacrifice animals, had to go to a priest. But the beauty of this is in Romans 8 and 22, for I delight in the law of God after the end man. I thank God for people like Daniel, for people like Job, for people like the three Hebrew boys, for people like uh, Mary, Jesus' mother, John the Baptist. I thank God for all of those legendary Bible figures and Bible real people. They are the ones that help us become better. Without their stories, without their testimonies, without their experiences, it would be hard for us to be Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ. You see, until you go through a test, until you commit that sin or backslide, or until you fall short in the glory of God, you don't know what it feels like to be in their shoes. Until you go through their experience, you don't know what it's like to be in their shoes. And I'm going to tell you something. Bullying, social bullying, that's one of the hardest things to come back from. You see, we had a whole lot of bullies back in the day in person. But social bullying, I believe, is the worst of bullying ever. Because... You have a lot of fake encounters and people that make up their lives and make up their stories. But I thank be to God that I serve a God that will never cheat on me. I serve a God that will never lie to me. I serve a God that will never steal because my God is faithful. My God is humble and my God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. And I thank God for sending the latter rain to all of us. And I give God and glory and praise for what God does. In Romans 8, 11, it says, For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. And we have 10 commandments in the Bible. I'm not going to quote all the 10 commandments of the Bible, but where did the 10 commandments go in the Bible? Where did the 10 commandments go in our schools, in our workplace? I'll tell you. One woman took school, 10 commandments, and prayer out of schools. One woman took the Ten Commandments out. One woman took those out and prayer out. We don't hardly even pray for our schools anymore. We don't hardly even pray for our students anymore. We don't hardly play for our kids anymore. Why? Because where the devils come in our schools, where the devils come in 
and just took over. We've got to get a backbone back into the house of God. We've got to get an understanding on why Jesus wants us to serve him at all times. Because sin is dangerous. Sin is a habit. And sin will take you down places where you don't ever want to go or where you thought you'd never go before. Sin will take you to the point where it will get you up at night thinking more than sleeping. Sin will take you to the point of where you actually want to do the action rather than not do the action. And I'm going to tell you something. Lord have mercy. I may get in trouble for this, but it is worth saying. We want to take away black history, but we'll allow lesbians and all that to be taught in the word. It's sad, but it's the truth. And we need Jesus in our lives.